हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू फिजिक्स वाला एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आर न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री व्हिच इज इक्विलिब्रियम एंड ट्रस्ट मी दिस चैप्टर इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर बेसिकली देर आर टू पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर फर्स्ट वन इज बेसिकली दी केमिकल इक्लिब्रियम पार्ट एंड नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज आयनिक इक्लिब्रियम सो इन दी फर्स्ट पोर्शन इन फर्स्ट थ्री सेशन विल ट्राई टू get the idea about the chemical equilibrium which is mostly applicable in cases of gases generally and then we are going to move towards the next idea which is the um, idea of equilibrium with respect to solution in which we are talking about the ionic equilibrium so basically in this first session i am going to talk about the basic introduction part what is what is the state of equilibrium then we are going to talk about the next part which is reversible as well as irreversible type of reactions where you can see this type of equilibrium then we are going to talk about the law of a mass action which is very important for the calculation of equilibrium constant which is our last topic of this session okay now first thing is uh, we were talking about the thermodynamics so we know about the system surrounding as well as universe in that case we know about different type of processes either the process is going to be reversible or it's going to be irreversible now let's try to get the idea what is uh, actually happened in the thermodynamics and let's try to correlate that entire part with respect to the chapter which is equilibrium and now i can say that we are talking about the chemical equilibrium part first okay so if i talk about the introduction part in that case we are more concerned about chemical equilibrium we are more concerned about chemical equilibrium so let's say for example if i talk about the basic part let's say i have a container i have one container and in this container let's say we have 20 ml of water so this part is water h2o okay 20 ml quantity is already there you know that at any temperature that liquid water is starts converting into gaseous phase or vapor phase that is the process of evaporation it means you can say this entire part is going to be converted into vapor state it's going to be converted into vapor state now the condition is this container is a closed container this container is a closed container okay so initially i can say that when the water is going to evaporate initially only water was present so at t is equal to 0 first of all you can say only liquid water is present liquid h2o is present and it starts evaporating so you can say initially rate of evaporation it was maximum it was actually maximum in the same way after some time you can see like uh, some amount of water vapors are going to be form uh, on on this side which is the upper side of the container and they starts combining together and they actually condense to form again liquid water because container is closed so there is no chance of escaping these water molecules i can say so first part is uh, the process of evaporation first part is the process of evaporation next part is the process of condensation so after some time you will see that condensation is going to start so eventually this rate of evaporation which was the maximum initially at t is equal to t at any any other time what happens that this rate of evaporation it it starts decreasing and rate of condensation it starts increasing okay and there will be one condition when one part is decreasing another part is increasing there is a condition when both these rates becomes equal so let's say at t is equal to t dash any other time after some some uh, more seconds i can say this rate of evaporation becomes equal to rate of condensation this rate of evaporation becomes equals to rate of condensation but reaction is going on reaction is going on reactant is converting into product product is converting again back to reactant reaction is moving on but again you can see that after some time there will be an establishment such that the rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation so i can say that this is the condition of this is the condition of equilibrium this is the condition of equilibrium i can see both the things are moving 
both the things are moving it means this liquid water is converting into vapor and vapor are again converting back into liquid water it means in this case this equilibrium is nothing but dynamic equilibrium so in entire chemistry we are more concerned about the dynamic equilibrium part although there is uh, another part of static equilibrium also there but we are more concerned about the dynamic equilibrium what i can say definitely in this case liquid water is the reactant uh, the water vapors are products so i can say i have one part which is reactant so there is one reaction there is one reaction in which a reactant is converting into product but just because of the presence of this closed container this product is again converting back into reactant. So this is a special kind of reaction in which this reaction is never going to complete. Reaction uh, reactant is converting into product. Product is again converting back into reactant. It means this is a special kind of reaction. It's not like that reactant is entirely converted into product. It's not like that. The reactant is converting into product and simultaneously product is also converting back into reactant. So this entire part is basically related to reversible type reaction. This type of reaction is basically known as reversible type reaction. So whenever we talk about equilibrium, we are more concerned about the reversible type of reaction as well as the condition of a dynamic equilibrium. So whenever the reactant is converting into product, so if I say that in this case, when the reactant is converting into product is converting into product and product is converting into reactant again so this part when reactant is converting into product will be your forward reaction while this part when product is converting again back into reactant that is your backward reaction so whenever we have a condition like this that product is converting back into reactant and reactant is converting into product that type of reaction corresponds to reversible type reaction a very specific type of chemical reactions in that case okay now if i talk about the condition of a dynamic equilibrium if i talk about the condition of dynamic equilibrium i can say that the rate of a forward reaction becomes equal to rate of backward reaction that is the most necessary condition most important condition whenever we talk about equilibrium state i hope this part is clear but there are certain questions which are coming in your mind i know i know so let's try to understand what are the basic characteristics of equilibrium so in that case i can say first part that at equilibrium both reactant and product are going to be present definitely both are going to be present and their concentration do not change with respect to time i'm not saying the both the concentrations are going to same they are not going to remain same but they will make become constant because every time rate of uh, forward reaction becomes equal to rate of backward reaction that's why their concentration is not going to change with the time but both are going to be present it depends that uh, forward rate is uh, comparatively more backward rate is comparatively less and then there is a establishment of uh, your uh, equilibrium state i can say so <coughs> every time product amount is more reactant amount is less but i cannot say that reactant is entirely converted into product so this means that the reaction is never going to complete whenever we talk about reversible type of reaction okay no the state of equilibrium is not affected by the presence of catalyst this is the most important thing this is the most important thing so always remember that the state of equilibrium does not affect by the presence of catalyst so whenever i'm i'm putting any type of catalyst it actually eventually uh, changes its activation energy that part we are going to discuss in the upcoming sessions that uh, what happens when we are adding a particular catalyst because there are certain reactions which do not occur at normal conditions uh, for example if i talk about hebert's process very well known process the manufacturing process of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen it does not take place very easily so we need a specific catalyst which is iron molybdenum catalyst to actually increase uh, its uh, process uh, the uh, increase uh, the formation of ammonia by lowering the activation energy by providing another path so definitely remember that the state of equilibrium is not going to be affected with the help of catalyst catalyst is always going to convert its path it's going to provide another path where activation energy is less that's it that's it
Now, change in pressure, temperature, concentration favors one of the reactant and thus shift the equilibrium point in one direction. This part is very important. This part is very important and uh, I guess in lecture number three of chemical equilibrium, we are going to talk about this part, which is related to leach Atelier's principle. Now, what happens when I'm changing the pressure, when I'm changing the temperature, when I'm changing the concentration of any product or reactant side, what happens that the uh, direction of equilibrium is going to shift or not? So that part is very, very important. Okay. That part we are going to see in leach Atelier's principle. Okay, in the same way, if I talk about the first type of reaction, uh, we are more concerned about the reversible type of reaction because uh, establishment of equilibrium only uh, always takes place when we talk about the reversible type of reaction. So chemical reaction in which uh, products can be converted back into reactants and reactant is definitely converting into product. That type of reaction is actually known as your uh, reversible type reaction. Basically, this example is there. H2 plus I2 gives us 2HI. So immediately after the formation of uh, HI, HI converts back into uh, H2 as well as I2. There is one more reaction you can say that uh, we have N2 plus uh, 3H2 gives us 2NH3, which is Hebert's process which is Haber's process that is the manufacturing process of ammonia that is also a reversible reaction uh, proceed in forward as well as backward direction definitely reversible reactions always proceed in forward as well as backward directions and definitely in that case they are going to attain the state of equilibrium and this is the dynamic type equilibrium this is the dynamic type equilibrium it means reaction is happening some part is converting into product, some part is converting back into reactant. So this, this process is occurring. Okay, it's, it never stops. Now reactant are never completely converted into product and vice versa. So you can say that reaction will never go on completion in case of reversible type reaction. For example, PCL5 is going to convert into PCL3 as well as Cl2. I hope this entire portion is clear. This is the basic idea about the reversible type of reaction. So what are irreversible type of reactions? Basically in this case, chemical reaction in which a product cannot be converted back into reactant. It means it only goes in one direction, forward direction only. So basically, for example, if I'm adding zinc granules in H2SO4, they are going to be converted into ZnSO4 as well as they liberate H2. But this reaction never goes back into the reactant side. It means there is only one direction for irreversible type of a reaction. So again, in this case, they only goes in the forward direction. If they are going in the forward direction, it means their rate of forward uh, reaction and rate of backward reaction, they are not going to be equal to each other at any time because backward reaction is not at all happening. If that's the case, I can say they do not attain the state of equilibrium. And in that case, reactants are nearly or completely, I can say, converted into product. So you can say in this case, completion is possible. But in case of a previous case, which is a reversible type reaction, there is no completion. There is no completion of a reaction takes place. I hope this entire part is clear. That is the basic idea about the reversible type reaction, irreversible type reaction, as well as the basic characteristics of equilibrium state. So how can we define this entire part? So we can say equilibrium can be further divided into two parts. First one is the physical equilibrium, where you can see the phase changes. So this part is basically the phase change reaction. It means you are changing the state solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to solid. These type of conversions are there when we talk about the physical equilibrium. Next case is basically related to the chemicals, which is known as chemical equilibrium. So equilibrium in chemical change, any type of chemical reaction, if that, that equilibrium is uh, happening, that state of equilibrium is achieved in case of any type of chemical reaction, that part corresponds to chemical type equilibrium. You can see this reaction, you can see this type of reaction. These are chemical changes. So when the equilibrium uh, is established in case of chemical reactions, that part is chemical equilibrium. In case of a phase transformations, we can say this is physical type equilibrium. Mostly we are concerned about this entire analysis, which is the chemical equilibrium part. I hope up to that portion, everything is clear to everyone. This chapter is a very easy, trust me. Uh, just uh, try to understand each and every part related to theoretical aspect and try to apply that entire part into question analysis. Uh, I'm telling you like uh, only one and two things are there. 
uh, which is mainly mainly the major portion is calculation of uh, equilibrium constant which is the most important part next one i can say leach atelier's principle and its various applications these two parts are very important in case of chemical equilibrium other than other than that the entire chapter is very very way too easy okay okay so uh, let's start with the next portion if i talk about the equilibrium in physical state you know that i'm talking about the solid to liquid liquid to vapor solid to gas solid to saturated solution of solute uh, solid in liquid or you can say gas to saturated solution in liquid that part gas in saturated solution of uh, gas in uh, solution that will be related to henry's law that part in, is in your 12th class which is solution chapter so there are some physical changes where you can see the establishment of equilibrium okay now in the same way if i talk about okay so we have one, one question first question says that 2NO plus O2 gives out 2NO2. The reaction is carried out in open and closed vessel in lab 1 and lab 2 respectively. The dynamic equilibrium can be studied in. So I told you that there is one container which is open container. There is one container which is closed container. So in lab 1 and lab 2 we have lab 1. We have lab 1 which corresponds to open container. we have lab 2 which is closed container okay so i can say this is the reaction happening if it is going to form product no2 this is going to be escaped from the open container and you cannot collect that entire part coming back to the uh, initial phase so in that case the product is already removed so in case of open container if product is already removed you cannot establish the state of equilibrium but in case of closed container this no2 vapors are going to go upside and eventually after uh, some reaction it's going to convert back into no as well as o2 it means only in case of lab 2 you can establish the dynamic equilibrium i hope this part is clear so establish of establishment of dynamic equilibrium looks like this 2no plus o2 gives us 2no2 so that will be the establishment of dynamic equilibrium i hope this part is clear so lab 2 can only be feasible for the establishment of dynamic equilibrium i hope this part is clear very basic question very very easy question okay now equilibrium if I want to define this entire part, that equilibrium is the state at which the concentration of reactant and product do not change with time. That is concentration of reactant and product become constant, not equal. It's not always necessary that they becomes equal, but their rate actually becomes equal. Okay. Now I can say that equilibrium state can only be achieved if a reversible reaction is carried out in closed space. Very important point very very important point related to equilibrium part this is only possible when you are talking about the reaction which is happening in closed container and a reversible type of reaction is carried out so that is the basic idea about the equilibrium state in the same way that chemical equilibrium can be attained from either side because you don't know the actual direction of the reaction if you have started from the reactant side you can say that i have started with the forward reaction if you have started with the backward side you can say i have the uh, reactant which is actually the product so you can attain the state of equilibrium from any of the side always remember chemical equilibrium can be attained from either side that is from the side of reactant and product very 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 important point okay so let's say if I'm talking about this entire part, if I'm talking about this entire part, what is the meaning of equilibrium? So we have one graph, which is the concentration versus time graph. So with respect to time, let's say I'm starting with the reactants. Reactants are basically H2 plus I2 gives us 2HI. Or in one case, if I'm reversing this reaction, reactant will be 2HI only, 2HI only. So you see that I can establish equilibrium for, from any of the side. I can use these two as a reactant or I can use HI as a reactant. Let's say, let's say in this case, I'm using, I'm using this type of reaction. I'm using this type of reaction. It means H2 plus I2, they are my reactant and the final product is actually HI. With the time, definitely the amount of this, these reactant are going to decrease. The amount of these reactant are going to decrease and the amount of a product is going to increase but after the establishment of equilibrium 
their amount, their concentration becomes constant. It's not going to change. So after this particular time, when there is an equilibrium region starts, you can see this entire part, this entire part becomes constant. This entire part becomes constant, not equal, not always equal. So you can say that initially reactant starts decreasing, the concentration of reactant starts decreasing while the concentration of a product starts increasing. But after the attainment of equilibrium, you can say they will remain constant. I hope this part is clear. You can also draw another graph. So let's say I'm talking about the concentration with a time, concentration with time. I can also say that it starts from here. Reactant starts decreasing. This is the part for reactant. The product starts increasing. This is the product part. So initially reactant starts decreasing and product starts increasing. And again, after some time, again, after some time, this is the equilibrium region. This is the equilibrium region. Now you can say the entire part of the concentration of reactant and product, they becomes constant. So that depends how this equilibrium is going to be achieved. It may be possible that after the establishment of equilibrium, the concentration of a reactant will remain less while the concentration of product remain more. It may be the case that after the establishment of equilibrium, the concentration of a reactant will be more and concentration of a product will be less. Both are the cases related to the establishment of equilibrium. I hope this part is clear. There is one more possibility. There is one more possibility that if I have the concentration versus time part, this reactant starts decreasing and eventually product starts increasing. It may be possible that they emerge on the same line. That is basically after this time, you can say we have the equilibrium region equilibrium region now in this case you can see that the concentration of a reactant actually becomes equal to concentration of a product that is only one of the case in this case you can say that at the equilibrium state after the achievement of uh, equilibrium reactant concentration is less in comparison to product in this case you can say that after the establishment of equilibrium Reactant concentration is more in comparison to product. So these three cases are possible. Definitely these cases are possible. Every time you can check this entire part. Okay. I hope this portion is clear. I hope this entire part is clear. Okay. <clears throat> if this part is clear, you can say another thing, another thing. Uh, there is one more graph which you can draw. There is one more graph which you can draw. There is one more graph. So if I talk about the rate with respect to time. So what happens initially the rate of a forward reaction is a maximum and it eventually starts decreasing. The rate of backward reaction is a slow initially and after the equilibrium, this is the only curve for equilibrium. So this is the equilibrium region. Now. In this particular curve, if I'm comparing rate with time, I know that for dynamic type equilibrium, that rate of forward reaction always becomes equal to rate of backward reaction. That is only one graph. Initially, the rate of forward reaction is more and eventually it starts decreasing. Rate of backward reaction is very, very low and it starts increasing. And after some time, after the establishment of equilibrium, both the part are become equal. So this is the only graph for rate. I hope this entire part is clear. So the chemical equilibrium in the reaction, which is this entire part can be achieved from either of the direction. So you can talk about the reactant or product, whatever it is, you can change your graph, you can change your graph. Now equilibrium state can be attained in lesser time by the use of a positive catalyst. So definitely it's not going to change uh, anything, the presence of catalyst only, the presence of catalyst only only provides a path with less activation energy.
I'll talk about that part like what is activation energy, why I'm saying this uh, every time that in, it only provides a separate path which requires less activation energy. That part I'm going to discuss when we talk about the uh, factors affecting equilibrium constant. Okay, so don't worry. So this is the only point which you have to remember at this moment, at this moment. Okay, now in the same way if I talk about the uh, process. Uh, it is dynamic in nature. Definitely, we are concerned about the dynamic equilibrium. So, definitely, it is dynamic in nature. It means both reactant, uh, both reactions are moving with the same speed. Uh, re uh, forward reaction rate is equal. Backward reaction rate is actually equal. So, that is the basic idea about the dynamic equilibrium. So, reversible chemical reactions are again classified into heterogeneous type of reactions. It means the reversible reactions in which more than one phase is actually present. So, this is one of the case. For example, CaCO3 solid is converting into Ca, uh, CaO, sorry, CaO, typo error, CaO as well as a CO2. Now, solid is present along with gases. So, if more than one phase are present, definitely we are talking about the heterogeneous type of reaction. So, they can be present in the reversible type nature. MgCO3 is converting into MgO as well as CO2. Again, you can see two different phases. In the same way, we have homogeneous type of reactions. They are very important. They are actually very important. So, the reversible reaction in which only one phase is actually present, those are actually known as uh, your homogeneous type of reaction. It means the reactant and product, they are present in the same phases. So, basically in this case, H2 gaseous, sorry, H2 gaseous, I2 gaseous, HI is again gaseous. So, this part is homogeneous type reaction. CH3COH is liquid, C2H5OH is liquid, CH3COO, C2H5 is liquid, H2O is liquid. Again, you can see that this is the same type of, uh, 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 same phases, definitely homogeneous type of reaction. Now, in this case, the most important part is basically the difference between the number of moles on the product side as well as number of moles on the reactant side. So, again, you can say that I have a first type of homogeneous reaction in which when there is a no change in the number of molecules. So basically this is the gaseous part. This is again the gaseous part and this is again the gaseous part. So if I talk about the delta Ng in this case, so number of gaseous product moles minus number of gaseous reactant moles, that is, with, uh, that is the value of delta Ng. Now if you see in this case, I can say 2 minus 1 plus 1, which is 2. So these are the reactions in which the number of molecules, there is no change in the number of molecules or number of moles generally. Uh, if I'm talking about the gaseous type, then I can consider delta Ng in this case. Second type of reactions are there where delta Ng can be positive or can be negative. Delta Ng can be positive or negative. If it is positive, number of moles on the product side are more in comparison to reactant. If it is negative, number of moles of the reactant side, uh, gaseous reactant side are more in comparison to the product side. So, you can say first example is PCl5 gaseous is converting into PCl3 gaseous as well as Cl2 gaseous. In this case, if you can calculate delta Ng, you can say 1 plus 1 to minus 1. So, that will be 1 that is positive. It means in this case, number of moles of a product are more in comparison to reactant. But I am considering only gaseous part because now we are more concerned about the gaseous type of reactions. In the same way, if I talk about the third part, in this case, I can say that a reactant side has more gaseous moles in comparison to product side. So, N2 gaseous plus 3H2 gaseous uh, gives us 2 uh, NH3 gaseous. So, that will be 2NH3 gaseous. So, if I calculate the delta Ng in this case, I know that part will be 2 minus 3 plus 1. So, 2 minus 4, that will be minus 2. So, you know this value is negative. This value is negative. So, majorly three type of homogeneous reactions are more important. These are the three types. First type, second type and third type where delta Ng will be 0, delta Ng less than 0, delta Ng more than 0. Why I am saying all these things? Because they are relevant in the calculation of equilibrium constant. Uh, we are going to understand how this equilibrium constant is going to change when we are changing any of these things. Okay. And our entire focus will be mostly on homogeneous type of reaction. Definitely, we are going to discuss heterogeneous type of reactions also. But the main part, 
of calculation is related to homogeneous type of reactions. I hope up to that portion everything is clear to everyone. Just have a look at it. <coughs> Okay, now let's talk about the next part. Okay, so we have one question. Uh, the following graph represents, so we have the concentration with the time. So I can say that initially reactant was present, product was not present. Eventually product is forming, reactant is decreasing. But you can see there is a time. After that, their concentration becomes constant. So this is the equilibrium region. It means I'm talking about the reversible reaction reversible reaction now this is c plus b plus c i can say their amount is decreasing it means these are reactant so c and b these are reactant and product amount is increasing so i can say a will be the product so this equilibrium will be like this b plus c gives out a gives out a that will be the reaction so b plus c gives out a option number c will be the correct answer okay i hope this portion is clear to everyone i hope this portion is clear very 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 easy question very easy question okay now the next part is law of mass action which i can say is the most important part related to the equilibrium portion now there is a difference between the law of mass action applying in equilibrium and law of mass action uh, which will be applied in case of chemical kinetics there is a slight difference in that case so if i talk about this law of uh, law of mass action it simply says that the rate of any type of reaction either it is forward reaction or backward reaction it is basically directly proportional to the active masses of a reactant or if I'm applying that particular part for product, again, you can say that particular rate will be uh, directly proportional to the active masses of a product, definitely. So rate is directly proportional to the active masses of any of these species, which is involved in that reaction, <coughs> which is involved in that reaction. Generally, generally, we consider this active mass as the concentration. In most of the cases, generally, we consider active mass is basically the mass of that particular reactant or product, which is actually participating in the reaction so that is the active mass so generally that means we are talking about the actual concentration of that reactant or product which is participating in the reaction so concentration means mole per liter so generally this entire part will be related to molarity only this entire part will be related to molarity molarity you know uh, number of moles of solute with respect to uh, amount of uh, solution so that is volume of solution that is basically molarity so it depends upon the molarity part also okay so uh, if i talk about any type of uh, reaction which is reversible type reaction and most important we are talking about the homogeneous type reaction okay which has attained equilibrium state at a particular temperature because equilibrium uh, this entire part depends upon the temperature also so at a particular temperature let's say this equilibrium state is established between these re uh, reactant and product now in this case let the active masses of a b c d are basically they are represented in a close bracket like this so a b c and d respectively at equilibrium now in this case if i want to define their rate i can say there are two type of reactions if there are two type of reactions definitely there are two type of rates first one rate of forward reaction it will be directly proportional to the active masses of a and b rate of backward reaction will be directly proportional to active masses of C and D. Now, in this case, if I am removing this uh, proportionality, I will have one constant, which is a Kf. That is the rate, rate constant in the forward direction. In the same way, if I talk about this entire part, this will be the rate constant in the backward direction. Now, you know that Kb is the velocity constant or rate constant of backward reaction. Kf is the velocity constant or rate constant of the forward reaction. Eventually, at the state of equilibrium, at the state of equilibrium, we know that rate of forward reaction becomes equal to rate of backward reaction. It means you can say Kf A B will be equal to K B C and D. Now you can say that K forward upon K backward, which is again a constant, which is again a constant, will be equal to active masses of product divided by the active masses of reactant. And eventually, this entire part will be converted into another constant, K equilibrium, which is actually known as 
the equilibrium constant that is the active masses of uh, product divided by the active masses of reactant now this k equilibrium can be anything let's say you are talking about the active masses in terms of molarity let's say you are expressing these active masses in terms of molarity then this k equilibrium is going to be converted into kc for the concentration part equilibrium constant uh, for concentration let's say in case of gases in case of gases generally their molarity is not that relevant but their partial pressure is relevant so in case of partial pressure if i am representing this entire part in terms of partial pressure then i say that this k equilibrium will be converted into kp it may be possible again let's say if these if these active masses are converted into number of moles if it is converted into number of moles then this entire part becomes kx so there are three representations whenever you are representing equilibrium constant it can be kc it can be kp it can be kx i hope this entire part is clear to everyone i hope this part is clear okay so this is the basic idea related to the equilibrium establishment of the equilibrium okay it may be possible <coughs> that now the reaction has a certain type of stoichiometry then you can use the stoichiometry power as well okay so the rate of chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of active masses of reaction to the power respective to the stoichiometric coefficient if if you have a stoichiometry in a particular reaction then you can also use that particular part you can use that particular part so for example i have the equation m m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 and so on they are converting into n1 b1 plus n2 b2 plus n3 b3 and so on where this m1 m2 m3 and so on are the stoichiometric coefficient of reactant and n1 n2 n3 n4 let's say these are the stoichiometric coefficient of the product then you can say that equilibrium what happens you just raise their power so if i'm using a very simple reaction let's say we have a a plus b b gives us a cc plus dd let's say this is the reaction so i can say the rate of forward reaction will be equal to kf multiplied by a raised to the power a b raised to the power b rate of backward reaction will be k backward c raised to the power c d raised to the power d okay if that's the expression so i can say that at equilibrium what happens rate of forward reaction becomes equal to rate of backward reaction that is the scenario okay okay now in this case i can say that k equilibrium will be equal to k equilibrium will be equal to k forward upon k backward that will be equal to c raised to the power c d raised to the power d divided by a raised to the power a and b raised to the power b that will be the expression that will be the expression for your equilibrium constant so there is a difference between this equilibrium constant as well as the rate constant which we are going to talk about in the um, uh, chemical kinetics part because in that case this uh, law of mass section slightly changes and in that case we don't include stoichiometry because every stoichiometry like whatever moles are present they are no, not going to participate in the reaction so we talk about the actual number of moles which are going to participate or which are going to collide with each other to form a particular product so in that case there is a slight change between these two but generally remember in case of equilibrium we generally talk about the power which is generally there is stoichiometric coefficient okay i hope this part is clear i hope this part is clear so you can see uh, that's why we can establish this type of equations okay okay so if the equilibrium constant for a gives out b plus c is k1 equilibrium and that for b plus c gives out p is a k equilibrium 2 the equilibrium constant okay so this type of uh, question we are going to discuss but before that we need to discuss some some uh, other analysis part also we need to discuss some other analysis part also okay uh, the equilibrium constant for uh, at 298 kelvin for the reaction if this if the initial concentration of all the four species are one molar then equilibrium concentration of d will be that part also we are going to discuss so these two questions we are going to discuss 
after some time because we have to establish certain ground rules for equilibrium constant so definitely i'm going to discuss those two questions but before that just try to understand what is going to happen in case of equilibrium constant so in case of equilibrium constant you know that will be looking like this that will be looking like this this part we have already established now if i say that i'm using the concentration in molarity that will be kc if i'm using the pressure partial pressure for gases that will be kp if i'm using only number of moles that will be kx so you can interchange these parts with respect to each type of reaction okay so kc is the constant and it's called equilibrium constant in terms of concentration that part i already told you so whenever you are representing active masses in concentration that will be kc Thus, for a given equilibrium, it seems that K equilibrium and Kc are same, but in actual practice, for some other equilibrium, they might not be same. Okay, so always remember, uh, in case of a Kc, if I'm like, like you can uh, explain equilibrium constant, which is uh, the product of or which is the ratio of active masses of a product divided by active masses of a reactant. That is the basic definition. If you are uh, representing the entire part in concentration, that it becomes Kc. So Kc and K equilibrium constant, they might be equal or they might be different. It depends upon the unit in which you are expressing the entire part. Okay. Now. This Kp, which is basically the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure. In this case, again, I have the same type of equation. But again, I am expressing this entire part with respect to partial pressure. So, partial pressure of C raised to the power C multiplied by partial pressure of D raised to the power D. Partial pressure of A raised to the power A. Partial pressure of B raised to the power B. So, that is the equation in terms of Kp. So Kc and Kp both are equilibrium constant and there is a very specific relationship between Kc and Kp also. Now, if you want to explain this entire part in terms of Kx, so in terms of a mole or mole fraction, I can say, in terms of moles or mole fraction, I can say, so you can say that if you are expressing this entire part in terms of a mole fraction, in terms of mole fraction, you can say that will be equal to mole fraction of C raised to the power C, mole fraction of D raised to the power D. So this part is mole fraction of D raised to the power D divided by mole fraction of A raised to the power A, mole fraction of B raised to the power B. That is the basic idea where chi A, chi B, chi C, chi D are basically mole fraction of A, B, C, D. And uh, that's the basic idea. And you know there is a relationship between the partial pressure total pressure which is according to dalton's law of partial pressure so this is basically from dalton's law of partial pressure which simply says that partial pressure of any gas will be equal to its mole fraction multiplied by p total so you can entirely convert this entire part into this formulation in terms of kp also so there is a relationship between kp kx as well as kc Let's try to find out what is the actual relationship in each and every case. First of all, if I want to define that relationship in case of Kp and Kc. So Kp is equal to Kc RT raised to the power delta Ng. Delta Ng you already know. Delta Ng is basically <coughs> equal to number of gaseous products. Uh, number of moles of gaseous products minus number of moles of gaseous reactants so that is the basic idea and this is only applicable for gaseous components always always remember only applicable in case of gaseous components and there is a relationship between kp and kx also kp and kx also because you can determine this entire part you can determine this entire part you know this part you know this part so you can say P A divided by P total will be chi A. You can put the value and after that you will get the relationship which is K P is equal to K X P raised to the power delta N G where P is the total pressure. So in terms of total pressure also you can explain the value of a K P. I hope this entire part is clear to everyone. Uh, with the help of questions you will get to know like what is going to happen in each and every part okay now if i want to calculate delta ng for these type of reactions can i calculate yes definitely for first reaction pcl5 gaseous gives us pcl3 gaseous plus cl2 gaseous delta ng will be equal to in this case uh 2 minus 1 that will be plus 1 okay next case uh delta ng in this case so gaseous 1 gaseous 2 only solid no gaseous 
सो दैट विल बी टू माइनस जीरो दैट विल बी टू इन थर्ड केस डेल्टा एन जी विल बी टू माइनस थ्री प्लस वन थ्री प्लस वन सो टू माइनस फोर दैट विल बी माइनस टू नेक्स्ट पार्ट फॉर दिस रिएक्शन वी ऑलरेडी नो इट्स गोइंग टू बी जीरो सो डेल्टा एन जी विल बी जीरो फॉर दिस रिएक्शन सो इफ डेल्टा एन जी इज जीरो then always remember kp kc kx every value will be same every value will be same exactly same if that's the condition how can we like prove this entire part if if this is happening if this is happening so for example i am using the same reaction i am using the same reaction which is h2 plus cl2 or h2 plus i2 gives us 2 hi okay uh what can i say in this case number of moles are let's say nh2 number of moles are ni2 and in this case number of moles are nhi okay this is the condition this is the condition so how can i say these entire parts are equilibrium so these are the moles at equilibrium at equilibrium these are the number of moles which are present total volume of a container is let's say v liter okay total volume of the container is v liter so if these are the moles first of all i can say that concentration of h2 will be equal to its number of moles n of h2 divided by volume done in this case that will be number of moles of i2 divided by v number of moles of hi divided by v okay uh, for each and every part their concentration is already there so i can say that uh, kc will be equal to hi concentration of hi raised to the power 2 divided by concentration of h2 and concentration of i2 can i put the values in kc so i can say that will be equal to number of moles of hi uh, divided by v whole square divided by number of moles of h2 divided by v and number of moles of i2 divided by v so this v v v square is going to be cancel out with this v square so the final expression will be n of hi whole square divided by n of h2 as well as n of i2 so that is the first expression for kc that is the first expression for kc now from that part if this is the situation i can say that uh, uh if that's the situation if that is the situation how can i say in this case let's say n total n total will be n of h2 plus n of i2 plus n of hi that will be the total number of moles so can i write down the expression of kx or k chi will be equal to chi of h2 uh, sorry chi of hi chi of hi Raised to the power two divided by chi of H two as well as chi of I two. So if I put the value, chi will be number of moles of that component divided by total. So that will be I can say number of moles of H I divided by n total whole square divided by number of moles of H two divided by n total and number of moles of I two divided by n total. so again n total square is going to cancel out with this n total square and final value will be n of hi whole square divided by n of h2 plus n of i2 so you can see both the values are exactly same both the values are exactly same in terms of k chi now last part last part i can say that kp will be equal to partial pressure of hi raised to the power 
डिवाइड बाय द पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ एच टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ आई टू सो दैट इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर के पी नाउ इन दिस केस यू नो दैट के पी विल बी इक्वल टू यू नो दैट पार्शियल प्रेशर विल बी इक्वल टू काई P raised to the power. So this formula we have already uh, predicted in the previous part that that will be equal to uh, K P is equal to K I P raised to the power delta N G. So P raised to the power delta N G. Delta N G is already zero in this reaction. So this entire part will be equal to one. So partial pressure will become equals to mole fraction only. Mole fraction only. So again you have the same expression. If I am putting this, that will be mole fraction of H I. Raised to the power two divided by the mole fraction of H two and mole fraction mole fraction of I two. You know the same expression is coming. Same expression is coming. Finally, will be the same. So you can say for these type of reaction, we have calculated that K P will be equal to K C will be equal to K I. I hope this entire part is clear to everyone. I hope this entire part is clear. Okay, uh, the value of Kc is 64 at 800 Kelvin for the reaction, which is this. The value of Kc for the following reaction is so again another type of same question, but we have to understand what is the characteristic of equilibrium constant. So three questions are remaining. I am going to discuss these three questions one by one each. Okay, so one more question is there. Okay, so this question is very easy. This question is very easy. So for Fe two N solid plus three by two H two gives us two Fe solid plus NH three gaseous. First of all, can I calculate delta N G? So one gaseous reactant is there minus we have three by two. So I can say that will be minus one by two minus one by two. If we have delta N G value, we know. That K P will be equal to K C R T raised to the power delta N G. That's the expression. That's the expression. So from that part, I can say uh, from that part, I can say that K P will be equal to K C R T raised to the power minus one by two. So do we have any expression? K C K C okay no no we don't have so I can say minus one by two will be minus one by two will be I can rewrite it as one upon R T raised to the power one by two if that's the situation I can say that K C will be equal to K P R T raised to the power one by two yes we have an expression like this yes K C will be equal to K P R T raised to the power one by two so option number C is the correct answer very easy question just from the same formulation can we calculate this part the question is coming in your mind sir like how do we get this relationship so you can calculate the value of a K P you can calculate the value of K C and then try to divide those part you will get the value as R T uh, raised to the power delta N G if you want that proof just let me know I'll try to make sure that in next class we will prove that entire part so you can take any general type of reaction. And then try to apply that entire part in this particular case. Okay. Okay. Now, if I talk about the equilibrium constant, first of all, let's try to decode the entire part of equilibrium constant, and let's try to solve all those questions which were uh, pending in the previous case. Okay. So the expression for equilibrium constant K is applicable only when the concentration of reactant and product have attained their equilibrium values and does not change with time. So always remember this particular part will always be there. when there is no no change in any type of reaction when the reaction is already established equilibrium then only you can talk about the calculation of k equilibrium constant now the value of equilibrium constant is independent of the initial concentration of the reactant as well as product it's not going to matter the only thing which matters is the concentration which is actually at equilibrium that is the most important thing so wherever you start nothing uh, matters after the state of uh, after the attainment of state of equilibrium what is the actual concentration that will decide the value of kc or kp or any type of equilibrium constant now equilibrium constant has one unique value for particular reaction represented by a balanced equation at a given temperature always remember this part is a temperature dependent so if you are talking about a specific temperature 
that kc kp kx whatever value you are considering that will be a unique value if you are changing reactant if you are changing product blah 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 anything is changing but you are not changing the temperature that value of equilibrium constant is not going to change this is the most important portion just remember this part now the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is equal to the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction just remember the lecture where we were talking about the uh, thermochemistry thermochemistry lecture number two i told you uh, some properties about the enthalpy of the reaction that is the reaction is reverse enthalpy magnitude remains same but the sign is going to change same way this uh, if i'm reversing the reaction the equilibrium constant will be the inverse of the previous reaction so let's say uh, i am representing a gives out b for this part k equilibrium is let's say k1 if i am writing the equation like b gives us uh, uh, a in this case its equilibrium constant will become inverse of first part which is 1 upon k1 so that is the beauty of uh, your uh, equilibrium constant okay i hope this part is clear i hope this part is clear i hope this part is clear now in the same way the equilibrium constant for a reaction is related to the equilibrium constant of the corresponding reactions whose equation is obtained by multiplying or dividing the equation so this is another one important part i guess this is the last property so okay so there is one more part so let's say i have one equation a gives us b first part first try to understand this now in this case the k equilibrium is basically k1 let's say I am multiplying this entire equation with 2. It becomes 2a gives us 2b. So on multiplication with any of the number. Now the new equilibrium constant k equilibrium dash will be the initial equilibrium raised to the power whatever number you have multiplied. So it becomes k1 square. This stoichiometry will be converted into the power of equilibrium constant. Let's say I am converting this equation as half A is converting into half B. K equilibrium in this case will be K1 raised to the power 1 by 2. So this is another quality of equilibrium constant. Now, let's say I have the equation which is A gives you B. In this case, K equilibrium is K1. Let's say B is converting into C. For this reaction, K equilibrium is let's say K2. And I'm, I want you to calculate the uh, equilibrium constant for the reaction this. Tell me what will be the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So if I'm adding these two equations, so this is equation number 1, this is equation number 2. So this equation number 3 is actually attained after adding equation 1 and 2. You are going to get this equation after adding these two equations. When these equations are added, their equilibrium constant are going to be multiplied. So K equilibrium for this reaction will be K1 multiplied by K2. So these are the basic properties or basic characteristics related to equilibrium constant, which you have to understand, which you have to understand. Okay. So that's the basic part related to the calculation. Okay. Now coming back to the question analysis, coming back to the question analysis. So let's say we have the first question, the value of a Kc for this reaction. So the reaction is N2 plus 3H2 gives us 2NH3. In this case, Kc value is given, which is 64. First part, Kc value is given, which is 64. Next part in this case, if you see, next part in this case, if you see, that uh, the value of Kc for the following reaction. So first of all, I have inverse the reaction. Uh, so it becomes 2NH3 gives us N2 plus 3H2. If that's the reaction, the Kc dash value will be, in this case, inverse. So 1 upon 64. Now the final equation is, if I'm dividing this entire part with 1 by 2. So this becomes On dividing the entire equation with 2, it becomes NH3 gives us half of N2 
प्लस थ्री बाय टू ऑफ एच टू सो ऑन डिविजन दैट विल बी रेस्ट टू दावर वन बाई टू सो यू कैन से दैट इट्स के सी डबल डैश विल बी इक्वल टू वन अपॉन सिक्सटी फोर रेस्ट टू दावर वन बाय टू दैट इज द स्क्वायर रूट सो यू कैन से दैट विल बी वन अपॉन एट सो ऑप्शन नंबर सी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओके आई गेस बोथ आर सेम सो ऑप्शन नंबर सी एंड डी बोथ आर सेम ओके so that will be the final answer just have a look at it and that's how you can deal with the reaction okay now the next question now the next question where is it okay okay so that's the next question so if the equilibrium constant for the reaction so we have the reaction which is a gives us b plus c okay in this case we have k equilibrium 1 and b plus c gives us p in this case we have k equilibrium 2 and this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2 on adding equation 1 with 2 i can say a will gives us p only because b plus c b plus c both are common they are going to cancel out in general terms not actually cancel out but these are common terms okay so if i am adding these two equations the final equilibrium constant will be k equilibrium 1 multiplied by k equilibrium 2 is there anything like that K1 by K2, K2 by K1, K1 plus K, K1 multiplied by K2. So option number D will be the correct answer for this question. Very easy question now, I guess. Very easy question. Okay. Next part. The equilibrium constant at uh, 298 Kelvin for reaction A plus B gives us a C plus D is 100. So we have the equation which is A plus B gives us C plus D. So Uh, initial concentration at t is equal to zero. Initial concentration is one 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 one. Let's say uh, if the initial concentration is one, okay, okay. So at let's say at t is equal to t equilibrium. Let's say at equilibrium, definitely this amount is going to be converted into product, and sudden amount is going to be converted into reactant. But initially the reaction always occurs. Like reactant is going to decrease and product is going to increase. So at equilibrium, certain amount which is x, x moles are going to be um, converted into product. So same amount will be added. So one plus x and one plus x. Okay. Now you know the concentration at equilibrium. You know the concentration at equilibrium. You know that uh, K C will be equal to concentration of C. Concentration of D divided by concentration of A and concentration of B. That part you already know. So if you put the value, that will be one plus x, one plus x, and one minus x, one minus x. And that Kc value is already given. That will be equal to hundred. So from that part you can say that hundred. Will be equal to one plus x upon one minus x whole square, or you can say that one plus x upon one minus x will be equal to ten, or you can say one plus x will be equal to ten minus ten x, or you can say eleven x will be equal to nine x will be equal to nine by eleven, nine by eleven, so. uh that is the value of x only now the equilibrium constant of d equilibrium constant of d will be 1 plus x so i can say that this part d will be 1 plus x which is 9 by 11 so that will be 20 by 9 20 by 9 9 i guess if i'm not wrong okay not 9 11 sorry 20 by 11 20 by 11 so 11 1 is 11 9 8 i guess that will be 
दिस वन ए ऑप्शन नंबर ए आई गेस ऑप्शन नंबर ए ओके सो दैट विल बी द फाइनल आंसर दिस इज द बेसिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन अबाउट दिस एंटायर पोर्शन जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट इट ओके नाउ द मेन पार्ट रिलेटेड टू द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम कांस्टेंट इज बेसिकली अ कंफ्यूजन अ स्लाइट कंफ्यूजन रिलेटेड टू द एंटायर पार्ट सर हाउ डू वी कैलकुलेट दिस इक्विलिब्रियम कांस्टेंट वी डोंट नो सो लेट्स से आई एम सेइंग दैट वी हैव अ इक्वेशन ए प्लस बी गिव्स अस सी प्लस डी लेट्स से दिस इज अ जनरल टाइप ऑफ रिएक्शन दिस इज अ जनरल टाइप ऑफ रिएक्शन now in this particular case there are two methods by which you can explain the equilibrium constant either in terms of number of moles converted into product either you can proceed with this part this is the first portion that some amount of reactant is going to be converted into product the second part is basically in terms of degree of dissociation in terms of degree of dissociation i generally prefer this this part which is degree of dissociation because it is much more relevant it is actually much more relevant in terms of degree of dissociation in comparison to the number of moles because they will give you sometimes a wrong answer but every time if you are dealing with degree of dissociation you will get a correct answer definitely for true okay for example if i'm starting with a certain amount of reactant or let's say i'm i'm using a very very simple reaction i'm using a very simple reaction in this particular case that i have a particular reactant which is converting into product very simple reaction very simple reaction initial concentration at t is equal to 0 let's say its concentration is c that will be zero because initially no product is going to be formed now after the establishment of equilibrium at t is equal to t equilibrium means the state of equilibrium is achieved some amount of this entire part is going to be converted this x amount is converted and this x amount is going to be formed so if i want to define its k equilibrium i can say that will be concentration of product divided by the concentration of reactant so that will be x upon c minus x so whatever value is given you can start with that particular part you can start with that particular part that will not be a problem for you so that is the expression in terms of uh, your your um, moles dissociated i can say or amount of reactant converted into product but that is not related to the uh, part where you can you can talk about the degree of dissociation now in this term in this term this degree of dissociation which is represented by alpha is basically number of moles dissociated divided by initial moles you can say so in this reaction i can say alpha will be equal to number of moles dissociated by x you can see divided by initial moles by c let's say so i can say from that particular part that uh, x will be c alpha you can represent this entire part so in this equation if i want to represent the same expression k equilibrium will be equal to x which is a c alpha upon c minus c alpha so that will become only and only alpha upon 1 minus alpha so you can convert these two parts this is only a general type of reaction this is only a general type of reaction and i'm giving you one thing that in upcoming sessions where we are going to apply the entire part for delta ng is equal to 0 delta ng less than 0 delta ng more than 0 i'll make sure that we have enough um, type of reactions where you can actually apply first this part that what is the moles dissociated what will be the value of k equilibrium what is the uh, alpha part in this case degree of dissociation and how you can calculate this entire part every time the answer is going to remain same but the calculation of alpha is a slightly easy in comparison to the uh, next part which is related to the formation for example for example if i talk about this next part uh so just remember this is the reaction this is the reaction now let's say let's say i have a reactant which is converted into two product let's say 
so in this case at t is equal to 0 this is c this is 0 at t is equal to t equilibrium that will be c minus x but in this case 2x will be formed because 2 stoichiometry is there so that will be 2x so in this case if you write down the expression of a k equilibrium you know that will be equal to that will be equal to uh, that will be equal to uh, 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 I can say product raised to the power 2 divided by reactant that will be the expression so you can say that will be 4x square upon c minus x c minus x <clears throat> now you know that alpha is again moles dissociated which are x divided by the initial mole so x will be equal to c alpha only in this case so if i want to express this entire part k equilibrium will be equal to 4 into c square alpha square upon c minus c alpha that will become only 4 c alpha square upon 1 minus alpha that will be the equation so you can convert each and every part whenever you are dealing with uh, any type of reaction uh, you need to make sure that you are like uh, doing same type of calculation you are using alpha part as well as moles dissociated whatever it is but uh, i generally prefer that degree of dissociation this degree of dissociation is much more important and relevant in comparison to the moles dissociated okay so the next class is going to be very very interesting um we'll try to incorporate the entire part of first of all we'll try to incorporate the calculation of kc kp and kx in uh, with respect to each type of equation that is delta ng is equal to zero delta ng less than zero delta ng more than zero and how you can convert this entire part into moles dissociated equation as well as uh, degree of dissociation part okay so i guess uh, that's all for today's session i hope everyone enjoyed this session uh, learn something new from this session uh, the next part the next session is again going to be very very interesting i told you this equilibrium chapter is a very interesting and very very easy chapter okay so let's try to wind up this session and uh, the remaining part of equilibrium constant or the calculation part we will discuss in the next session okay so that's all from my side thank you so much